24th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Grob? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Excused. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Winninger? Here. 15 present. Corms present. Alderman Grob. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting be accepted as entered on the record. It's been moved and second that minutes of the previous Council meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This evening we have Troop 805 with us from St. Luke's. Uh, boys, would you like to come up and lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. for parking district number four. Any interested parties wishing to be heard on any of the districts? Any interested parties wishing to be heard on one, two, or four? On the ground. And I would move that the hearings be closed. Move the second hearing to be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 The attorney. <coughs> This uh, came in at the last meeting. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Eldon Berg, be considered for the Citizens Advisory Committee on Community Development to fill the unexpired term of Bruce Wolf, which expires April 30, 2006. Signed by the mayor. And that can be passed. Yeah, and I would move that your appointment be confirmed. Moved and second that my appointment be confirmed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Public forum, Pat. Ed Prochek. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Ed Prochek, 1215 South 13th Street. I'm here this evening to thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the council, and you, Your Honor, Mayor, uh, for your actions two weeks ago. I'd like to uh, speak on behalf, hopefully, of, of transit management and of the workers and thanking you for allowing us to serve the citizens of Sheboygan and uh, the citizens that, uh, that really need public transportation. And the main reason why I decided to come up here tonight is because for the last two weeks, uh, the citizens that have been getting on my bus have been saying, hey, Eddie, when you see, the, when you see my alderman, when you see the mayor, will you please do me, do me a favor and tell him thank you? So I thought on behalf of them, all the riders of Sheboygan Transit, uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. That's all. David Beeble's with us tonight. And there's been a lot of questions on a drop-off site and a lot of misinformation out there. What we're going to take, what we aren't going to take, what hours we're going to have, what days are going to be open. And I got a letter from a lady this morning, or today I should say also, uh, requesting that someone explain this. Uh, procedure and what we're going to do. So David, take five, ten minutes and just go through it so everyone under understands where we're at with that. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Well, today today was the first day that uh, the drop-off site at its current location has now been moved to our municipal service building area. And one advantage of doing this is that citizens will now be able to drop their grass clippings, yard waste, 
waste oil, metals, every day of the week, actually six days, Monday through Friday, as well as Saturdays. Where in the past, we were only open on Tuesdays and Saturdays at the drop-off site. This, and clearly, yard waste is our, is our number one bulk item that we receive at the drop-off site. For example, and I don't have the final statistics for 2003 calculated yet, but for in 2002, we we received at the drop-off site 6,700 tons of grass clippings, leaves, and tree branches. Whereas metals, the total metals at the drop-off site was around 550 tons. Garbage, the the waste that can't be recycled that does bring get brought down to the drop-off site, was around 1,400 tons. So clearly. The bulk of the material, the yard waste and the metals, we're still accepting. So uh, the drop-off site is not closing. It's just changing location. We're still going to be providing the core service of, of the drop-off site. So I just wanted to clear that up. David, core service washers, dryers, uh, things like that without Freon in? Right. Freon, Freon appliances, we, we, we cannot accept. In fact, we charge, when we had the old drop-off site, we charge $50. Many other places charge less than that, and some will, will take your old appliance when you purchase a new one for a slight fee. It, clearly, the drop-off site mentioned the yard waste. If one thing to help, help us would be to mulch their grass clippings instead of bag them. Uh, besides saving our operations the time and money, uh, it has many benefits that enhance the lawn. Uh, the use of grass clippings is in your garden or flower beds can act as a mulch. And composting grass clippings is other, and, and other yard waste, such as kiss, kitchen waste and leafy vegetables, will help produce a quality compost. Much of the debris that people were bringing to the drop-off site should be placed at their curbside, provided that it's around three feet by three feet by three feet. But basically, if it can fit in a three-foot box, and it's under 35 pounds, and it's not 100% metal, uh, such as, I'm, I'm thinking, a ceiling fan. Um, a toaster oven, um, a bread machine. Uh, those type of items we would receive at the drop-off site um, and basically they were just being thrown away because the, there's not much to recycle in those types of small appliances. So if they're placed at the curbside, it, it, it saves the, the resident the time and effort to, to haul it, package it, and bring it down. So. We have the curbside collection program. It's a very efficient program, and, and that's where we like to see that material. And what was happening is we were duplicating a lot of our efforts with some of that material coming to the drop-off site when it should be placed at the curbside. Um, other than that, uh, as I said, it's a change. We just started. Today's the first day. We're going to see how it goes. Granted, we're not getting much yard waste this time of the year. We're expecting it's coming up in April and May, and uh, we're hoping the, the, the citizens are patient with us as we, we we uh, try to change with them. David, question. Uh, it was in a paper that we're going to see junk all over the city, tires, couches, refrigerators, stoves, all that, and alleys, backyards. We pick that up now, correct? We, we pick that up now on a, on, on a complaint basis. We work hand-in-hand right. -hand with our building inspection department when, when those areas of, 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 I guess, abandoned material are in, in backyards and alleys. We do pick that up. It's, it's, not, it's not rampant. Uh, I, I give the citizens of this community a lot of right. respect and credit. Uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful community uh, and evident in, in terms of their willingness to bring the materials to the drop-off site. Uh, I, I truly don't believe that that's going to be the case in the well, future. I don't think responsible citizens would do that. I really don't. Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Dave, would you elaborate on metals? What do you mean by metals? When we talked about this issue in Public Works, I thought it was just going to be yard waste and drain oil, and, and I didn't remember hearing anything about metals. We, it, it, originally, we thought we, we didn't have room at, at the service building area, and yeah. re, re evaluating it, and then plus uh, listening to some of the citizens' concerns when, with the metals, we felt let's give it a try. We're going we're gonna to have an area designated for metals at, at, at our new, new location. Anything that is solid metal, you're right. saying? Now you, you give you like a, a Weber grill or something in that nature, or it's, um, a bicycle. Uh, that, that should be you know, recycled, not placed at the curb. Uh, when you get, get those heavier metals, they damage our vehicles by trying, mm -hmm. to, trying to compact it, as well as it, it truly needs to be recycled by, by the DNR mandates. Okay, and furniture people could cut apart, and as long as they can make it into three by three or smaller, ideally that's put it out with it, the garbage. It, that's right, right. And, and I know that's probably the biggest change is what am I going to do with my couch 
or my mattress. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you think about your own household, um, I, I don't believe every resident is getting rid of a, a couch every year. Um, it's probably right. a, 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 an event maybe every five to 10 years, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the majority of some of that waste is, is coming from people moving out of the community or moving into the community and they find some of this old material and uh, they don't want it no longer. So. Uh, in that case, yes, they can, they can cut it down and put it into that, those size requirements are. There's other outlets that currently handle that material. Or a special pickup, correct? Right? Okay. right. Thank you. All involved. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, some of the things were already answered, but I'm just going to state one or two things yet. Uh, concerning the uh, stuff placed at the curb, already this evening I observed a chair even larger than this placed at the curb, a mattress placed at the curb. These are things we will not be picking up. Is that correct? That's that's correct. If it's if it's that large, it's something that we, we our, our our vehicles and our packers are, are unable because we have a split rear packer where we combine we collect recyclables and garbage in the same truck, and therefore when, when you get items that large, uh, you, you can't fit in the truck. And as well as there are garbage collectors uh, with the, the weight requirements, uh, back injuries and workers' compensation claims could could be a major issue for us. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Warren. I think, uh, David, one thing that uh, we still have special pickup. If, if someone wants something picked up from the no, curb, no, we don't. Call, you're not going to no, do that No, we, we don't have special pickup. But, but, but the, the privates, the privates will, will provide either a dumpster or, or okay. provide some of that service. So we're not doing the special pickup at no, all no. anymore? Okay. The other thing that I was thinking, perhaps if we had a sheet of paper, or eight and a half by 11, two-sided with all these instructions that could get handed out to the public when they come down to the recycling center. That would help a lot. Um, we, we do have a handout. It, we're, we're, it's, being, it's being revised somewhat. We, we have some of the other outlets for some of the materials we don't accept, and we have the rules on the front end hours that we will be handing out at, at, at the site when people do come. So. Great. That'll help. David, would that be on a website also? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Great. Alderman Lund, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dave. I think you've explained it quite well. I've had people talk to me and they say there's no place to take their washers and dryers and couches. I said, there certainly is. Previously, they had to load them into their car, their van, their truck, their neighbors, whatever, drive it to the city. Now they still load it on their neighbor's truck or van, drive it someplace else. It's, it's, there's still places available for it. It's just not this address, it's a different address. Correct. Correct. Alderman Gross. Thank you, Yaron. You had mentioned a special pickup, and then Alderman Warner just asked right, about private. it. Uh, and um, or will we still be having periodic special pickups where we'll say, okay, today is one weekend that um, anybody that wants to put a chair at the curb or something like that, we won't have that any, no. either anymore. We, we haven't had special pickups for, for over, over, I bet you, close to 14 years now. I realize that, but and when we were talking special yeah. pickups here, that's what I thought. Yeah, I, oh. when I, when I, when I, when he, when I, Excuse me, when I thought the mayor said special pickup, I, I, was, I thought he was referring to some of the privates that provide that service now. We've had a dumpster program in the city where uh, we, we allow the dumpsters mm -hmm. to be placed on the, on the curbs. How about on a complaint basis, David? Complaint basis, we, we, work with the, we work with the building inspection department again. We notify the property owner and give them X amount of time to, to remove that material. If Fail not, we go there. If failure to remove it, then we go there. And uh, potentially, then we, we, what we do is we, our costs are are charged back to that property. That's owner. what I was talking about, Alderman Groff. Okay, right. thank you. One word or the other, you'd have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Very good. You're on. Alderman Groff. Thank you. Um, before we get into the consent agenda, okay. I would like to pull some documents forward. Sure. Um, the resolutions 2451 through 2455, and these are the resolutions that are awarding the sale of $1,500,000 general obligation promissory notes for providing um, uh, $1,500,000 worth of um, notes for um, $1,065,000 of general obligation promissory notes for um, authorizing the borrowing of of three million two hundred thousand um, dollars, and providing the issuance and sale of taxable general obligation securities, 
and uh, authorizing the issuance and providing for the sale of a not to exceed $3,200,000 taxable bond anticipation note series, as well as authorizing the issuance and sale of up to $756,625,000 worth of general obligation land remediation promissory notes. I would move that all five of those resolutions be put upon their passage. Move to second that to five resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, we have Carol Worth from Kubik, um, Stephen Tom Thompson, and all of you received a copy of this. <clears throat> Correct. And if Carol, would you just like to explain what happened today? Good evening. Um, today we had taken bids for three issues the city was selling in the bond market. Uh, one of the issues, one and a half million dollars, was for the city's 2004 capital improvement projects. And uh, in my memo, there is a short description uh, underneath that heading that says that the uh, capital improvement projects were for improvements to the fire station, streets, storm sewers, and storm water management. We took the bids, and we re which resulted in five different bids. And the winning bid, which is always the lowest net interest rate, was from UMB Bank in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, the net effective interest rate was 2.77%. And this is for bonds that mature between 2005 to 2013. So it's a wonderfully attractive interest rate. Uh, we are also in a very good bond market uh, right now. Um, we were talking about this in finance a little bit, whereas the uh, lowest point of the bond buyer index, and that's measured on a 20-year basis, uh, was last June. Uh, and that index was at a low level of a 4.21, which was a historical 40-year low. And right now, we're at a 4.35, so very, very close to that historical low. So it's a wonderful time to be in the bond market. And uh, that's why we're seeing 2.77% on basically 9 to 10-year amortization schedules. So um, very good timing to be in the market. The uh, second resolution is for $1,065,000. Um, again, it's amortized uh, through the year 2013. This financing is to provide funds for projects done in TIF District Number 6. Uh, those projects include uh, constructing and Im improving restrooms, fish cleaning station, parking area, sidewalks, landscaping, and signage. Uh, we received four bids on that financing. And the winning bid, again, was from the same place, UMB Bank in Kansas City. And that was a net effective rate of a 2.75%. Okay. We did one more financing. And this was for $3,200,000. This was a taxable bond anticipation note. It's taxable because of its purpose. Uh, federal tax law will dictate if they are tax exempt or taxable. <coughs> so the taxable rate will be higher than a tax exempt rate. Um, these bond anticipation notes have the same structuring as the ones that the city did in 2003. Uh, it's a common plan of finance. It's for TID-6, um, for the South Pier projects. So the financings come due and are callable all on the same date so that the city can manage their debt. We received five bids on that financing. The lowest bid was from Morgan Keegan in Memphis, Tennessee. And that was an interest rate of a 3.12%. Okay. All three of those financings have um, exhibits. Um, uh, each one has an exhibit B, C, and D to the resolutions you currently have. Um, those exhibits consist of uh, exhibit B is a bid tabulation, which shows all of the bidders for each financing. Exhibit C is the actual bid form that was submitted by the winning bidder. And that is the contract between them and the city. And Exhibit D is taking the interest rates on that contract and producing the amortization schedule, which demonstrates the net effective rates that we have now talked about um, as being the winning bid. Uh, the city, uh, with the approval of the council tonight, those late rates would be locked in. Uh, the city would receive the money on March 29th, and of course they invest the money until needed for projects or reimburse other accounts. Um, also, I want to point out that uh, prior to all this happening, 
We obviously prepared a document called an official statement, which you may have seen, a very large document, distribute that nationwide. And it is also used for submission to the rating agencies. And I am very pleased to inform you that both rating agencies have confirmed the AA rating of the city. You have a AA3 from Moody's Investor Service. You have a AA- minus from Standard & Poor's. They are comparable ratings. Uh, Moody's uses the 1, 2, and 3 designation after the AA. Standard & Poor's uses minuses and pluses or nothing in between for, for their designation. So they are comparable ratings by two different agencies. So that is very good news. So we have good news on ratings. We have wonderful news on market. And we had three very good sales today from all different participants nationwide. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Thank you. Paula McGrath. Uh, I just want to, um, at the end of your agendas was the book that was distributed, or the book that, that was distributed to, to everybody. So. OK. If there's no other question or no questions, uh, Pat, would you call the roll? Byrne? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Moody? Aye. Windfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Dahlman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you. Alderman Groff, back to you. You have the documents already signed? They're signed. Okay. We did that already. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, then on the consent agenda, which is items 24.1 through 24.36, I would move at this time that um, all our O's be accepted and filed, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and we pass all resolutions and the general ordinance. It's been moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and file, our C's be accepted and adopted, resolutions and ordinances be put upon this passage, except there's been a change. 24.3 and 24.15 are taken off your agenda for now. They will get back to us when they want to pop sale. 24.15? Okay. 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 okay, now under discussion, Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'd like to pull forward 24.21. Okay. Four zeros. Um, it's the uh, communication from the Sheboygan Area School District relative to the police liaison program. Public protection and safety recommends the report of officer be accepted and placed on file, and that the final decision be made during the normal budget process. As a member of finance, that became cumbersome to us last year because if we do that in November, December, you know, they're halfway through the school year, do we budget it for six months? And the chief clearly indicated he wanted it supported. I think it really, I'd prefer, and I guess my motion is to, to um, send it to salary and grievances to be dealt with, with 24-142 that they'll be taking up because they're both involving the staffing of the police department. And I think, you know, whatever they decide, the recommendation comes back to the council or whether we deal with it tonight, we, you know, hear from the police department, the committee, the whole. I just think that that's a better place to put it because that, you know, we've got a, that's part of the budget. And, with the right. police department, so we should have that same recommendation from the same committee coming together. So I rec my motion is to refer to salary and grievances. Second. Moving to second to refer to salary and grievance under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Moody. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, number 2423, okay. could we vote on item number two separately? Separate vote on item number two. Okay, Would you like this to read is, that? Pardon? Would you like to read it, please? Yeah, this is by the city clerk submitting a communication from Richard Poole relative to an encroachment upon his property. Um, Mr. Poole lives on 16th and Business Drive, right on that peak. His property is the very closest to Business Drive. He has a document stating that he, or that the previous owner of that property was granted eight feet and uh, the city is claiming that it was only three feet. And I guess all along, I've, I've contended that rather than drawing sides, there could have been a compromise. That the sidewalk was put within three feet of Mr. Poole's back uh, step or, or his patio. And, and he's got very, very little room to get through there. I think maybe just enough to get his lawnmower through. But yet we made this huge six-foot 
parkway so trees could be planted there. And I just, I think a compromise could have been reached. So I, on item number two, I would just like to vote no on that. Is that a motion? Yes. She doesn't have to, it's just yeah. a division oh, yeah. of the question. Okay, that's fine, we can do it separately. Okay. Okay. Vote on that. Vote on, one, on item one first and then vote on item two. Okay, on well, let's take that document right now then. On 24-23, we'll vote on item number one first and then number two. Okay. Uh, we need a roll for that? No. All in favor on number one? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two, what Alderman Moody was speaking about. All in favor of passage the way it is? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I think That's motion right. carries. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, motion carries. Okay. Well. Thank you. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. On 24, 34, and 35, they are actually both related. I'd just like to put a point of clarification out there, please. Okay. I will not be asking for separate vote, just a point of clarification. Sure. And uh, basically, what this is involving the farmer's market, which will be again held this summer at uh, Fountain Park. The clarification point is the fact that we'll be no longer allowing vehicles to actually be driving into the park. Uh, as they had done in the past because of the fact sometimes it was quite wet and the grassy areas had been starting to become torn up. So needless to say, we've uh, made the decision mm -hmm. and it was uh, passed through our committee to uh, keep the vehicles out of there. Uh, personal observation of the um, farmer's markets. Uh, it, probably isn't been through the Public Protection and Safety Committee yet, but in reality, I'd like to see, in my mind, some sort of a licensing for it. And the reason being is the fact that a lot of these people that offer the items at the farmer's market do this actually commercially. Think about it. It is not just excess food. They rent large lots grow the stuff and then sell it. And it's more for an income basis than it actually is for a farmer's market. It's welcome very openly in the community. I see no problem with it, but uh, it's just that it's something that I would like to see licensed. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I have a question on actually two documents, 2422, which is regarding the winter parking rules. If uh, that could just be explained what actually is taking place there. And also, since Alderman Bowman is raising his hand, yes. <laughs> the last one, 2436, regarding uh, the beach restoration at the South Pier project, if you could explain what that is and where the money and funding is coming from for that. Alderman Bowman? <coughs> okay, I'm glad to speak again. Thank you. Uh, concerning the uh, all the communications here that were concerning the snow emergencies and snow and alternate uh, parking rules, uh, we are actually looking to file each one of those by recommendation of committee. The reason being is because we're not going to be acting currently on the uh, no parking year round. The uh, uh, parking will still be uh, only from December 1st through April 1st. And these are all things that we're considering right now uh, to be referred to the committee of the new council, by the way, the Public Works Committee. Um, it looks as though the ordinance will probably be drawn as parking on the same day as, you know, your overnight parking the way it is. So in other words, if there's no emergency on January 2nd, we would plow, you know, the even site first, things like that. So it'd be very simple and Again, it'll be coming out of the Public Works Committee of the new council. Is that acceptable? Yes, yes. Okay. Nice. Then the second item was the beach restoration. Uh, if you notice today's newspaper, today was the last day you were able to be driving on Old Fisherman's Road. It is no more as of today. What's going to be happening there, you did see the dollar amount uh, for the restoration. What we're going to be doing is actually covering the old road with actual beach sand. It's not going to be the grainy stuff that you find in sandboxes. It's going to actually be the beach type stand. And it'll be brought in 
and placed there, and this is all within the budgetary uh, constraints of the uh, uh, district. Okay. Paula, do Thanks. you have anything to add to that? Or? Okay, David. Okay. Excellent. If there's no other questions, Pat, would you call the roll, please? <coughs> Bonnet. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Moody. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Van Agren. Aye. Vanderwill. Aye. Wangerman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Wenninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 24, 37, and 38 to be referred. 2439 by city clerk submitting a change of premises for Ch Champs Bar for a broad fright to be held on April 3rd, 2004. I heard a beep. Who's handling that one? Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file the report of officer. Moved and second, we accept and file the report of officer under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question. Um, they're going to change the prem, uh, the broth fry from the from their premises of where they are to where. <coughs> I'm uh, just curious. I so don't need to know. Usually, usually uh, under state law, if they move the premises where they're selling the, the liquor, they have to get approval of the common council, and it's usually just back on the backyard in the alley on the patio, or is oh. that basically correct, Pat? Yes. Um, okay. They're only licensed in their building. They want to license their outside for Thank a one-day broad fry. Okay, so from inside to outside at that address. If they if they had that area licensed year-round, no juveniles, no underage people could ever go on that property. So Thank they you. only do it as a one-time thing. Thanks. Okay. No other questions? Pat, would you call the roll? Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Van Akron, Aye. Vanderwill, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonnet, Aye. 15 eyes. Mm. Motion carried. 2440 through 2450 to be referred. 2451 through 55, we already handled that. 2456, it's will, be will I over? Oh, excuse me, Alderman Groff. Your Honor, um, because of the fact that we needed to um, to close on this by the end of the month, I need to ask for suspension on this document. Is there any objections to suspension? <coughs> Hearing none, proceed. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second a resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. A quick um, explanation of this, I'll refer to Steve. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Groff. The council, I think two meetings ago, uh, approved upon the recommendation of the Industrial Development Commission to buy back from Rota Roca LLC a uh, 4.7 acre, acre uh, parcel that they had purchased in the industrial park. Um, they, they had purchased it two or three years ago with the intent on uh, building a new building. Um, the economy being as it was, they just changed their plans now. They're not going to be building. And the protective covenants call for offering the property back to the city before they could turn around and sell it to somebody else. And they have to offer it back to the city for the same price they, they purchased it for. Uh, like I say, two council meetings ago, the council approved buying it back. I uh, was going through the documents, uh, preparing the deed and so forth to get ready to close, and it dawned on me that uh, where is the money coming from? So I called finance, and they said, you know, there, there isn't any money in an account, so it has to be transferred into the account so that we can actually pay for it when we close. So that's what this document does. Alderman Wright, question. I was just asking for the clarification, so thank you for taking care of that already. One additional question, though, is we're transferring the money, but from where? You said there wasn't money. It's coming from and um, reserve. Uh, I mean, reserve fund balance. Right. I mean, is there money in there now, or? Here's Rich. She just walked in. <laughs> Hi, Rich. 
I don't ask questions where it comes from. I just <laughs> ask, uh, can you put it into an account? I'll have to ask for a repeat of the question. Sure. We're talk discussing um, the Rotoroka land acquisition, and uh, he noticed uh, when we're trying to close on the deed that the, we hadn't actually paid for it. We don't know where the money is coming from. And I'm asking my question is, where is the money coming from to buy back the land? I believe uh, that's part of the business park, District 3. Um, but right now, because we cannot incur any expenditures under the current TIF law there, it will be, um, I believe it will be coming from the old industrial park as assisted on some of the expenditures in the, in the new business park at this point, and then it's put in as an advance uh, that would be repaid from future tax increments from the business park. So basically it's uh, an advance of the expenditure. Okay. And with that advance, if we happen to sell it to somebody else, you don't have to advance it from the first or future revenues, it would just be paid back. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Pat, would you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Agren? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 24th, 57, and 58 to be referred. 2459 will lie over. 2460 will lie over. 2461 through 24134 will be referred. And I would ask, Alderman, could you save your copies for plan commission uh, on this so we don't have to make excess copies and Pat doesn't have to go out and chop down some more trees? I mean, the stack is really thick, so if you can save them and pass them on to Land Commission, truly be appreciated. All of them in order. I thank Your Honor. That's exactly what I was going to say. Don't send me another pack like this. I'll bring these along. Thank you. So, thank are you. Are you telling me to save them for the next council meeting? Save them. We're going to be just. Well, Plan Commission, there's only one alderman. That's right. You're talking about next council, council meeting. Council meeting. Save them. And, and save and them for the next council someone meeting. Someone can let. We won't make copies for you again. Right. And someone can let the alderman on the plan commission. Well, you have it. Yeah, look there. Okay. Uh, Paulette, do we need any extra copies though for the plan commissioners? She's got copies. She can make her own. <laughs> oh. I mean, she's got them already. I was going to make copies for her. No, but it'd be nice if we could borrow some rather than running all that paper I off. Here. Okay, if we can borrow some so we don't have to run all those copies off, it would save. Alderman Warner? I think uh, one more thing, this reminds me again of uh, my former colleague, Carl Papel, when he thought we should have laptop computers, we could have all this on a little disk. Someday, maybe we'll get them. Maybe Bill Gates will give us the money or something, I don't know, but that sure would solve this problem. Thanks. Thank you. 2434, resolution by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Doyle, Bonet, authorizing transfer of appropriations in a 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. And I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to the second resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Brewer? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2348, a general, yeah, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Moody, Wangeman, and Vanderweel amending the code to create a law and licensing committee and transfer certain duties to that said committee. Alderman Warner. I think, Your Honor, I would make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Move to the second ordinance to be put upon this passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this change in the operations of the Common Council will add a fifth standing committee, mm -hmm. the Committee on Law and Licensing. If you remember at our Ethics Board meeting a few weeks ago, I mentioned that this was coming forward from the Public Protection and Safety Committee. This change will establish a parent committee to the <coughs> City Attorney's Office to deal with legal and licensing issues. 
Uh, several years ago, the council had a committee called the Judicial and Legislative Committee. That committee was dissolved and its duties were distributed to other committees. Most notably, from my perspective as Chairman of Public Protection and Safety, was the liquor licensing, licensing function and other licensing issues that were given to Public Protection and Safety. Uh, the licensing function in Public Protection and Safety has been handled by the Vice Chairman of that committee. Uh, for obvious reasons, it, it's a large volume of work that's involved in it and the amount of time and attention to detail it takes it, it takes uh, that vice chairperson's time, uh, most of his time to do that, his or her time. And uh, we just made a lot of changes in the committee with the licensing uh, aspects that the city has right now, going to background checks and other administrative changes. But even with many changes, uh, the function alone takes up as much as half of the Public Protection Safety Committee's meeting time. Our meetings run from two to three hours, most often the average is two and a half. And it's not really the length of our meetings that is the problem for us. It's just that uh, with these being an average of an hour longer than all the other committee meetings, uh, it's the issues that come up, it's, it's difficult to spend enough time on them and the citizens are waiting extra time to get into the licensing function. And there's just not enough attention paid to detail when you're under those types of pressures, I think, and it would be something good for the city to see this committee come back. It comes down to being spread too thin to adequately address the needs of not only the city, but the people that the licensing requirements have a direct effect on. The Public Protection and Safety Committee believes it would be in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan if the city's attorney, city attorney's office had a parent committee that gave them the same level of support and direction that the council gives to all our other major departments. No other major department in the city is without the benefit of a standing committee to oversee and provide direction to its operations and to address its needs and issues directly. And in that, I know uh, the city attorney's office, I think, reported to finance, but finance is more interested in other issues. And the licensing issues that we've dealt with over the last few years have, uh, have really blossomed into a lot more state regulation and other issues there. And Pat's office will, I think the licensing clerk, Sue Richards, would, would say uh, there's been some really major changes over the last few years. And in that alone, there's an awful lot of issues that come up. Uh, I think for some older persons, this is going to mean there's more meetings. But I think the formation of the Law and Licensing Committee will best serve the city and the public in the long run and, and allow it to pay more attention to detail. And uh, the Public Protection Safety Committee unanimously supports this change. We've talked about it uh, for probably about six months in committee on and off and talked to the mayor about it. So it would form another five-person committee with another chairman, another vice chairperson, and, uh, and they would probably meet the city attorney's office like the old committee did. So we recommend passage. Alderman Moody. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Just to add to Alderman Werner's comments, uh, I was on the Judiciary and Legislative Committee years ago, and that, that committee used to run at least an hour and a half. I think Steve <coughs> remembers those. And uh, a lot of times we call people in and they're not there, so we, by policy, call them for a second time. And um, if we have our regular public protection and safety issues first and, and, and uh, staff comments run lengthy, then these people are sitting in the hall forever and ever. So I, I think this is the best idea to go back to this as a separate committee again. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Stephan. Oh, yeah, just one question. We got rid of the committee. Are we just reinstating this committee so all the former stuff they had, they get again? Or is it just the licensing part of it? I mean, I guess we're talking claims about. claims, too. And I haven't heard they were getting claims back. Judiciary and legislative used the to The claims, claims, I think, would still stay in risk. I think so that was. it's just the licensing and law okay, and I guess issues. Just so you guys got that clear somewhere, you know, the resolutions or the bylaws or whatever okay. it needs. Because I think we need to clarify who takes care of what, and I just it wasn't clear on that they were getting everything back or just the licensing portion of it. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Graf, Manny, 15 eyes. Motion carried.
24136 will go to finance. 24137 will go to plan commission. 24138, plan commission. 24139 will go to plan commission. And 24140 will go to special committee of risk management. Steve. 24141 is a resolution directing a, a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of the city's official zoning map for described property in the South Pier District. That could be passed. Alderman Warner. Make a motion. Motion to general ordinance be put upon its passage. Resolution. resolution. For a resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 24-142 is a committee report by Public Protection and Safety indicating uh, your committee met and discussed the hiring of additional police officers, recommends the hiring of one now and two by the end of 2004. That will go to seller and grievance. 24-143 is an ordinance amending the city's official zoning map to change the use district classification of described property in South Pier <coughs> District from class PPUD pre-planned unit development to Class South Pier PUD 2004-1. And that will go to Plan Commission. I spoke to Alderman Warner a little bit about uh, the one that went to sell agreements for the hiring of the police officers. We did agree on one additional officer now. We will look at it at the end of the year, and Alderman Warner, um, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll look at the budgetary concerns at the end of the year before we'll proceed with the other. It'll be one coming up. And you do have to get me something ready for protection and safety to advance that to sell agreements. Uh, that was on the, that's, that's what the ordinance that's was. The, okay, I so we, I think, yes, Your Honor, Okay. I think they need your permission based on the policy. So uh, okay, I'll get something out to pass. Right. Go ahead, Alderman Warner. All right, Alderman Reinflech. I have a document in my packet 135, but I don't see it on the agenda. It's the next one. And okay, <laughs> yes, that's the next one. I was looking for between 134 and 136. I that's after closed session. <laughs> uh, we will not have a closed session tonight. Uh, we will not need to address that in document 135, which you are asking about. But before we adjourn, <clears throat> I'd like to just go over a couple of things in Madison. I was in Madison last week. We had a presentation by Jim Zaleski, senior fiscal policy analyst for Colorado Policy Institute. And he talked about the Tabor Bill in Colorado, what it would do if it be implemented in Wisconsin. Uh, the recommendations, if we would go with any Tabor legislation, how we should be writing it up and not follow the Colorado legislation. So I can make copies if anyone will want copies of this. Uh, I think everyone should be aware of it because sooner or later we're going to be dealing, which I'm hearing from the legislation, legislator and the senators, somewhere this summer we will be acting at, on, at Madison on some legislation with the Tabor Law. So everyone's up on it now. It's going to affect our community. The other thing, this weekend there was a, uh, a meeting in Madison, Governor's uh, Task Force, on, well, I should say Gov Governor's Council on Tourism and it's eyes taxes to fuel tourism. And some of the ways the Governor, Governor's Council on Tourism discussed a few options, and that includes a statewide room tax or use of a sales tax. Uh, and they throw out different ideas where Cal Cal California generated tourism marketing money from assessment on large tourism-related businesses. In Missouri, it was a division of tourism started in 1994, and they received a percentage of the sales tax. Illinois had a, has a 6% room tax on hotels and motels. That started in 84, and that generates about $65 million. So the room tax issue continues, but it's statewide concern, so everyone knows. And the last piece of information, I was down. Many of you know I, are aware earlier this year I had the privilege of being appointed to the Governor's Workforce Investment Council. Our initial meeting took place this past Wednesday, March 10th, and currently there are three more scheduled for this year. The council has been charged with ensuring the state utilizes its workforce development resources in the most effective and efficient manner as possible. Prior to our council's formation, the following ob observations were made about Wisconsin's workforce development efforts. Wisconsin's workforce development programs 
are not well coordinated and too often are not accessed by the state employers or employees due to a lack of knowledge or structural roadblocks. The opportunities are for improvement in this area are many and the benefits of such improvements are quite clear. Some of the initial thoughts shared last Thursday and Friday by the council, myself was what we're thinking of is retain and create higher wage jobs, wage scales for jobs in area, prepare workers for tomorrow's economy, and provide skills for the jobs currently in your area right today. Add value to Wisconsin's economic base, tap Wisconsin's full urban potential, implement strategies at a regional level, lower regulatory burdens, and build a worldwide class infrastructure. As additional meetings are held, I hope to be able to share with you our progress in these areas. The opportunity for our state and Sheboygan in improving our workforce development initiatives is vital to our continued success. So as we go on, I will keep you informed on where we're going on this one also. But if anybody would want copies of any of this, I will make copies. Uh, I think everyone should have a copy of the Tabor bill, though. That is very important. I will get it out on your desk. Okay. Alderman. Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before we adjourn, I would like Rich Gebhardt to educate yeah. uh, very quickly the population of the city about Blue Harbor. Things are coming along so well and so quickly. I would like him to comment about how expenses are coming in vis-a-vis -vis the budget. don't have all the numbers with me, but in general, uh, the draws on the Blue Harbor on both the convention center and the resort have been uh, it's greater than 50% at this point uh, that they are on budget. Uh, we have uh, you know, a contingency on the uh, convention center. Only a minor portion has, has been used at this point. And um, the, basically uh, everything generally is on schedule at this point. I um, wish I had numbers with me to be able to go through them in detail, but I, um, but if anybody is interested in that, I'd certainly be glad to do that. At this point, there are no concerns. Well, I, I guess, we're, you know, there's, we're constantly reviewing it uh, through staff. Uh, Tom Holden, especially, is on the construction side uh, with the Kramer uh, invoices. Uh, all that enders on, on all the other invoices. We're working as, as a team reviewing everything that comes in on the draws. Um, and we have issues along the lines. Can't say that there aren't any. Um, but uh, we are working them out, and we reach agreement as, as we go along with, with all this. Uh, but right now, um, it, is, it is on schedule and within budget. We have not moved any dollars from any of the lines to other lines, as, as the agreement calls for. Uh, we stayed right on budget. If they spend the dollars on one line, such as for design, that's the max for that line. Okay. Alder McGrath. I was just wondering, I know at one point in time when we, we, we had the open house in, in January, I think it was, there were 57 of the 64 condos that were sold. At this point, are the rest of them sold? or? Would you know how many are sold? Steve. Steve. <laughs> uh, Alderman Graf, I, I can address the condominium sales. Uh, when they said 57, they were talking about deposits. Mm -hmm. I've heard <coughs> now uh, a month ago there, were, there was talk that there were deposits for 72 condos, and there's only 64 being built. But th <laughs> no. those, are, those are refundable deposits. They don't equate to hard sales. Hard sales as of, uh, I think it was about two weeks ago when the bank financing, M&I Bank, uh, went the developer the balance of the money for the second phase of the condominiums. Uh, I <coughs> believe they had 43 hard sales that equated to $13.2 million worth of sales price. And uh, originally, we were anticipating that there'd be $11 million <coughs> worth of condo sales, you know, entirely. So it's going to be closer to 20 some odd million dollars worth of condominiums, assuming they all sell. But uh, that was two weeks ago. Great. Good to hear. Any other questions? Alderman Vollman. 
<coughs> document 135. Do we still have to act on it, Alderman Warner? Didn't we act on it? 135, you told me we weren't going to. Yeah, we, we have to file that, I believe, right, Steve? We're withdraw it. So why don't we file that? Withdraw it. <coughs> I didn't have a sign. Okay. Motion. On that, John, I would make a motion to file. Okay. Moved in second to file document 135. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Move to second to adjourn. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye.